The famous 1965 song by Bob Dylan is Like a What? A. Rolling Stone. B. Reader's Digest. C. Sports Illustrated. D. TV Week. Oh, God. Bob Dylan. I... I like think a Rolling this... Stone, a Reader's Digest, a Sports Illustrated TV Week. I'm going to go with A. Locked in. Correct for $100. <laughs> $200. DFO is an Australian discount retail chain, the name of which stands for Direct What Outlets? A. Furniture. B. Fabric. C. Factory. D. Fruit. Now, I'm pretty certain about this one, Eddie. I'm going to lock in C. Lock in Factory Direct Factory Outlet. Correct for $200. <laughs> 300 The Wizards Gandalf and Saruman are characters from which fantasy series? You're happy about this one, aren't you? Oh, yeah. A lot happier about this than you were than the Rolling Stones and <laughs> yes. Bob Dylan. A, Harry Potter. B, The Lord of the Rings. C, The Chronicles of Narnia. D, Pirates of the Caribbean. All fantastic films, but I'm going to lock in B here. I'm very certain about this one. You know this one? It's locked in and correct for $300. Which of these names for common insects is not spelled correctly? A. Butterfly. B. Cockroach. C. Beetle. D. Grasshopper. Um. Okay. One of them's spelled incorrectly. I don't want to embarrass myself and get the wrong answer on this one, so I think I'm going to pass. See you, Amelia. Thank bye you. bye. <laughs> Hi, for common insects is not spelled correctly. Butterfly, cockroach, beetle, grasshopper. Um, well, it's not butterfly, it's not cockroach, it's not grasshopper. Um, it's beetle. C. Lock in C, please, Lock in Eddie. C, beetle. That beetle. <laughs> that beetle, not the singing beetle. That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the, the Fab Four. That's right. B-A-T-L-E. Yes, it is. John Paul, George and Ringo, correct for $500. <laughs> Beetle as in Beetle is B-E-E-T-L-E. -E -E. We're going to take a break, come back. There's a million dollars, six contestants, everybody's in it. Eleven questions and I'll give you a million dollars. For a thousand. The umpire decision review system known as DRS is a technology-based system used in which sport? A. Cricket. B. Soccer. C. Tennis. D. Australian rules. Actually, no, this one too, Eddie. It's uh, A. Cricket. Lock in A, Lock please. Lock in Cricket. Correct. For one thousand dollars. $1,500. Originating in London in the 1900s, dubstep is a form of what musical style? A. Punk rock. B. Heavy metal. C. Electronic. D. Country and Western. Hmm. Never heard of dubstep. I think I'd like to take my pass. Catch Thank you, later, Sue. Bye. Thank you. In the 1990s, dubstep is a form of what musical style? Punk rock, heavy metal, electronic, country and western. Well, I know a lot of people at my age listen to this type of music and I know it's a variant of C, electronic. Put it in. Yeah, lock, lock it, it in, Eddie. Done. <laughs> it is correct for 1500 <laughs> To a half thousand. Which Prime Minister was in office when television was first broadcast in Australia? A. John McEwen. B. Harold Holt. C. Ben Chifley. D. Robert Menzies. Oh, this is a bit of a struggle. Uh, <laughs> don't really know politics apart from recently, so I'm going to have to pass on that idea. See you, Shannon. Catch you later, mate. <laughs> if television came into play in Australia? No. Oh, it's sort of 50s. All you know, right, let's work it through. Which Prime Minister was in office when television was first broadcast in Australia. John McEwen, Harold Holt, Ben Chifley, and Robert Menzies. Well, I'm, I'm thinking it's either B or D. Um, what do you think? I'm gonna, I'm just going to guess, because 15 seconds. Um, Eight seconds. Six. I'll go C. What part of it's either B or D ended up at C? I have no idea. 
fifties? Oh, I don't know. I've, I've got One of them was the longest serving Prime Minister in the history of the country. Yeah. Which would have been a chance that he might have been there. Yeah, Sir Robert Menzies. Far out, all right. Started in 1956 for the Melbourne Olympic Games. Menzies was Prime Minister twice from 1939 to 41 and then 49 to 66. All there right. you go. Well, Sorry. thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you, Bye-bye. A4, B8, C12, D6. 16, sorry. 16. D16. Um. Cube. Yeah, cube's got uh, six faces on it. Um. How many edges? How many edges does it have? I'm going to go for B, Eddie. Actually, no, I'll pass. Catch you later, Stuart. See you, mate. <laughs> Plenty of time to think about it. So how many edges does a cube have? 4, 8, 12, 16. Uh, block in C, Eddie. 12. 12's in, 12's right for two and a half now. <laughs> yep. Six faces, eight vertices, that's corners, and 12 edges. 4,000. Thank you. Domenico and Stefano are the first given names of which famous design duo? A. Scanlon and Theodore. B. Sass and By. C. Dolce and Cabana. D. Cutter and Buck. Mmm. Not into fashion. So. You can't pass if you like, Bruce. I think I'll take my pass, Eddie. Catch you later, buddy. Thank you. See you, mate. Domenico and Stefano are the first given names of which famous design duo? Scanlon and Theodore, Sasson by Dolce and Gabbana, Cutter and Buck. I am unsure about this one, but I know it's not Scanlon and Theodore. I don't think it's Sasson by, so I think I'm going to lock in C, Eddie. Lock in. Correct for $4,000. Yeah, first two Australian, great Australian companies, and uh, if you're in a Scanlon and Gary Theodore, of course, Scanlon and Theodore. $6,000. <laughs> All right. A person who is impanelled is entered onto a list of potential what? A, jurors, B, immigrants, C, doctors, D, apprentices. I'm hoping that my law degree skills are going to help me on this one. I'm going to lock in A, jurors. Lock in A, jurors. If you got that one wrong, we were going to actually <laughs> tear up your... <laughs> Piece of paper. We're going to charge a double hex. $6,000 <laughs> correct for jurors. <laughs> five questions, five contestants when we return in the hot seat, but at the moment, Amelia is looking. Oh, it would be excellent. Take that one to Copenhagen. Oh, definitely. You'll probably be able to buy an ice cream with it over there. It's that expensive. <laughs> $10,000. Awesome. All right. How old was Drew Barrymore when she began filming E.T. in 1981? A4, B6, C8, D10. OK, I'm not sure about this one. I know she, obviously all of these ages are quite young and I know she was really young in this. I don't think she was four and I don't think she was ten. So B or C. Um, I'm going to lock in B, Eddie. Lock it in. Correct for $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> she played uh, the five-year-old Gertie in there. Come on, Amelia, let's go for $20,000. All right. Which of these Central American countries borders Mexico? A, Nicaragua. B, Panama. C, Honduras. D, Guatemala. Again, I am unsure about this. I'm thinking either B or D, leaning towards B on this one. Central Honduras. American countries borders Mexico. Oh, I don't think it's A, B or C. Oh, Honduras, that sounds Mexican. Um, which of these Central American countries borders Mexico? Oh, gosh. Ten oh. seconds. All right. Eddie, I'm going to lock in B. Final answer. 
Three oh. seconds. Quick. Yeah, B. B is locked in. You're tossing up between? B and C. Oh, well, you know, when you're D. D. D, Guatemala. Oh. Yeah. And Belize to the south and the USA to the north. Here, the Damn it. countries around the outside of it. Hey, Emilia, good luck right. with your degree. Thank Thanks you for being part much. of the show. Thank See you, you later. 2013. A painting by which artist set a world record for the most expensive artwork ever sold at auction. A. Francis Bacon. B. Edvard Munch. C. Vincent van Gogh. D. Pablo Picasso. Oh, this one's not going to be easy to eliminate anything out of. Late 2013. World record for the most expensive artwork ever sold at auction. I don't think it's Picasso. Go. I'm going to take a punt and I'm going to block in B. Lock it in. Ten. Change it to A. Lock in A, please, Eddie. Final answer. Final answer. In. Why? I don't know. I think I remember reading something about it or hearing something about it and I thought, I don't even know who you are. Why did you jump off Edvard Munch? Just because Francis Bacon kept staring at me. <laughs> OK. Well, Munch's famous for the scream, isn't he? Yes. Kinds of paintings. Mm -hmm. Francis... I wouldn't even know what Francis Bacon paints, to be no, honest. No, he paints expensive ones. Yeah, obviously. The most expensive. Correct. Oh, yes! Yeah! Yeah! His painting, The Three Studies of Lucian Freud, fetched $142.4 million at Christie's in New York in November 2013, going past Edvard Munch's, Munch's The Scream, which went for $120 million, the previous record. You ready? Fine. Here it comes. Just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> the expression, to err is human, to forgive divine, is credited to a work by which author? A. Alexander Pope. B. William Shakespeare. C. Rudyard Kipling, D. Voltaire. Mm. I've heard the saying. I'm reasonably sure it's not Shakespeare. I'm not sure why, but Voltaire is jumping out at me. But then again, it could be Kipling or Pope. It's one of them. It's definitely one of them. Fifteen. Okay. I'll go with my gut feeling, Eddie, and I'll lock in D. Voltaire. Locked in. Four seconds on the clock. It's not B, and it's not C. And Sue, it's, it's not D, not it's D. Alexander Poe. Oh. Taken from a line in his 1711 poem, an essay on criticism. There you go, Sue. Well, so look at who close. writes things in future. You will, in the end. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you there you go. <laughs> Here we go. Before his daughters became reality television stars, Robert Kardashian achieved his fame as a what? A yachtsman. B inventor. C conductor. D lawyer. Oh, my friend is going to hate me for getting this wrong. She loves the Kardashians. Um, <laughs> Okay. A yachtsman inventor. A I don't think it's a conductor. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be a lawyer. I'm going to have to guess this one. Have a think. Robert Kardashian uh, achieved his fame. All I know is a reality show. I didn't know he did something famous. <laughs> um. Before his daughters became reality television stars, Robert Kardashian... I'm going between either A or B. Five and seconds. I'm going to lock in A, Eddie. A yachtsman. Oh, Shannon. No. Man, he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. Yeah. businessman. He was a close friend of O.J. Simpson. Served on his defence team at oh. the 1995 murder trial. Oh, shit. Oh.